Hello everyone, what's up? Well, today's video, I hope we can all sleep and sound peacefully now. So, ha 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 ha, April Fools. So, apparently now, Arachnoboards is up and running. You know, to be honest, I kind of suspected that this would happen. Because it is April Fools and people love April Fools jokes. I don't know why, I personally don't like it when people joke on me, but yeah, it's up and running and it's also really sweet. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, it would not make sense to close such a successful forum that's probably money making to them just because of some kids that wanted a language barrier. So they could say, oh, you're a douche, you're this or that. But, you know, I'm just glad it's up and running and I kind of played along with it, so I hope <laughs> you don't get too offended by that uh, video. So, anyways, today's video, now that. Arachnoboards is up and running. I'm all happy now because I can deal with uh, more transactions. Time to start off with the new Mythbuster series. So uh, we are at 25. I last one I did was I think the Choco Goldenies. Or no, the Nandu Chromatis. Yeah, the Nandu species. So now today I'm going to do the Horn species. Oh yeah, speaking of also good news is that my tapis will be coming in next week and Tarantula Canada is going to get their uh, big import so looking forward to that all right so let's get on to this board here so according to uh, Platnik's uh, paper his catalog which I posted it during the uh, Pokey Mythbuster video uh, these are all the possible species in the genus. So we have Brachycephalus, which is the greater horn baboon. Uh, Buchanus and Darlingi are both the same. These are called the rhino horn baboon. Marshali, which I'm going to go into explicit depth because this is the only species of this genus I've worked with. It's called the straight horn baboon. And the sandary called the sand, sandy horn baboon. Also, I'll draw your attention to the ones in black right here. Uh, Dolicocephalus, Hilliardi, Palseni, and Pilansi are the only Ceratogyrus species that do not have a horn on their, uh, on their carapace. So just because it's Ceratogyrus species doesn't mean it has have to have a horn in them. You can see these half in green, they do have the horn. And in black, they don't have the horn. Of course, we don't see these in the hobby yet, so hopefully if uh, someone breeds these, uh, that would be really sweet. Alright, so now let's go on to the topics here. Okay, so a common name of the C. Marshali, this is the one I'm going to go into explicit depth because I kept this one before, but it also will apply to uh, the Brachycephalus, the Darlingi, and the Sandari, since they're one of the same specimen that comes from uh, Africa, to be precise, like uh, Zimbabwe. So I'm not sure if I know my, my geography right, but it's probably uh, south southern uh, Africa. All right, so straight horn baboon. It's an old world terrestrial that comes from Zimbabwe, Africa. So an old world terrestrial. What does that tell you? Uh, it tells you a couple things. It tells you that it's going to be defensive, it's going to have potent venom, and it's a species that you're not going to see very much, because whenever you see old world terrestrial, you're going to think yourself, okay, it's going to be exactly like your H. lovinum that's going to burrow. So you're going to have to provide a lot of substrate in your tank for your C. marshali or C. sandari. Okay, so the Latin name is called Ceratogyrus marshali. Serato gyrus marshali. Okay, so there is one particularly horned species in South America. This is the only one that is in existence. I uh, don't know if there's any other ones. I've seen some specimens at Tarantula Canada, obviously not for sale. So if you want to know what it is, this is what it is. It's called Therobothria uh, hoff. Many. I think it's two N's or one N. There we go. It's Sparabophia hoffmani. It's called the South American horned. It's not a baboon because it's uh, 
a South American species. It will probably be South American horn bird eater. Then again, I hate common names and I just like to use this one. Okay, so the availability and costs. So, sea uh, marshali sometimes will rarely pop up in pet stores, although not you know your typical one that sells re uh, reptiles and dogs and stuff you would probably most likely find them in a real exotic pet store that's that's where I find mine uh, you can also get them from online dealers um, for slings they should be no more than what twenty five thirty dollars and if you're going for three to four inch uh, females it'll probably range into the one hundred to one hundred twenty five dollars at least for a sea marshali I'm not sure of what the other species will sell for. Okay, so the growth rate, the mature males and the mature females. So the females get up a respectable five inches. So here is my C. Marshali. We'll have a look at her. Uh, this is Marsha. She's been featured in many of my feeding videos, so you can right away tell that Sriracha jars really have great appetites. So the specimen is an overall overall um, two-tone brown color with a lot of patterns on the abdomen and on the carapace and it's characteristic of the horn you can probably see the specimen here very nice looking species okay so mature males will possess tibial hooks and as well as bulbous pedipalps. They get a little smaller than uh, your mature female. They probably get around having to three and a half to four inches. Uh, the growth rate, I'm not very sure on the growth rate because I never raised a sling before. Uh, I could imagine it being the medium fast where uh, females will probably mature in around three to five years and mature males will get around two to three if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so now the enclosure setup. So uh, I'll show you what is good for one. Okay, so for slings, uh, like I said, pill jar like this with a lot of substrate to burrow. Uh, for juveniles, like two to three inches, it's a good idea to get yourself the 32 ounce uh, deli containers and put a lot of substrate in, just like my haplopelma did. Make a little burrow right here. Also, <laughs> my Polinobius muticus. Uh, there's the water dish all the way down there. You can see uh, they're burrowing fine and they're really happy. For adults, uh, a mid-sized critter keeper like the one you see right here, it's just perfect for one. So this is an adult female. You can see it's probably going to be molting very soon. But you can see a critter keeper like this is just more than enough space for it. So um, my specimen doesn't like to burrow for some reason. Most horn species do burrow. So what I would do is uh, I would give it like my H minax, fill it up here with uh, three quarters of the way with um, eco worth uh, substrate. And there you go. So the care sheet video, it's pretty simple. Uh, I did mention it in my back in 2009. Uh, they're very easy to take care of. Um, they like it fairly warm, like around 25 to no 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That's basically 23 to 26 degrees Celsius. Uh, for mid humidity, they don't like it overly wet. Uh, they like it around the 75 percent range. So I would just give it water. They go give a water dish to them as they're adults and just maybe miss once every two weeks. I think it'll be more than enough for the species. So for uh, temperament, uh, these are not tarantulas that I would love to handle because uh, like I said, they're very uh, defensive. So I'll just uh, prod my specimen to show you how aggressive she is. Ooh, and very quick too. There we go. So this is why you would never handle your C. marshali. One thing I did mention about C. marshali is that if you probably saw my transfer video that I did, I think over a year ago, 
With C. Marshalli, it has like the pyrogallus. They have the clear abdomen band underneath. So that's one way to tell a C. Marshalli from other species. But you can also tell that it's a C. Marshalli because of their straight horn. It's probably one of the best looking horn species in my opinion. We're not really sure of what the horn is actually for. My personal my personal opinion is just that it's for balancing purposes, so you can probably see that's where the clear abdomen band is. And they are capable of uh, stridulation too if you guys uh, see that. I'll just demonstrate once. <laughs> and there, see the clear admin band right over here? I don't like pissing off my specimens, but uh, that's one good reason why I would never handle any horn species. She's usually really mellow tempered, but I think she could possibly be in pre molt. I think that's why she's acting the way she is. <laughs> But, and again, a very intimidating species, if I do say so myself. Okay, so now for breeding. Okay, so with African species, they're generally the easiest to breed. Um, I've seen uh, Steve Talon W. A.D. has put a, up a rad on arachnoborts, uh, saying that he bred his species and uh, he did not so well on the side because the female didn't pack it good. But generally, if you do breed these species, uh, they are fairly good. They get around 100 to 200 eggs. So for recommendations, it's not a great idea for a first tarantula, obviously, because of its super aggressive nature and uh, whatnot. But if you're going on to the old world species, if you're trying, if you want to try your luck with them, I recommend either this species, uh, the U E. Pachypus, which is the stout-legged baboon, or the P. Lagardi. Not the OBT because OBTs are <laughs> bite in your face. So say goodbye to Marsha. <laughs> Even the fangs are quite intimidating on the species. Yeah. Never have I seen her so pissed before. Anyways, I'm going to uh, see you guys. And I'll try to make that uh, mature female peak hammer dry, and hopefully, I'll have great success in it. So, I want to thank you for watching that Mythbuster video, and hope you enjoyed it. Alright, thanks guys.